Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Vicious, and it's time for another tutorial video for Dungeon Defenders. This video is going to be a very useful one for everybody. It's going to be showing you how to solo the bonus stage, the Glittering Caverns, on the hard difficulty. I've uh, actually been running an Excel spreadsheet and tracking my progress as I play through the game and found the mana per minute and experience per minute rates that I get for every stage. And the Glittering Caverns on hard actually has the highest ratio and it's soloable. So using this me method I'm about to show you, you'll be able to power level any of your characters very, very quickly. You'll be able to make some mana so you can purchase things or make upgrades. And it's just a good thing to know because you can actually find some really good loot there as well. I'd recommend that you have a full tower squire to do this, preferably like level 50 or higher. Uh, you know, it's only 100,000 to respec. I would say it's worth it because you'll be making almost three to 500,000 per run of this. So we're going to go to the bonus Glitter Helm Caverns. That's what it's called. We're going to play it on hard difficulty. So this stage really it comes down to this is a tower tutorial showing you where to place the towers, what towers to use. You can do this 100% with only a squire. However, if you have a apprentice or a monk, you can supplement or uh, help out some of your other towers by uh, placing some of those in there. So I'll kind of try to point a few of those places out when I get to them. For now we'll switch to the squire. Remember, you can press the shift key to see the map. This is going to be useful for you if you're not familiar with where the chest locations are so you don't miss any of them. The chests are most important here right when you first start because you need all the mana you can get to start off. After the first round, you'll have enough mana just from the dead mobs probably to build the rest of your defenses without any problems. I'm not a huge fan of slice and dice towers, but this is a good spot for one, and we're going to put one here on this bridge. You want it far enough back so that it forces the enemies onto the bridge, because that makes them form a straight line, which is going to be absolutely perfect for your friendly harpoon, which is going to be placed here behind it. And then there are a ton of flying wyverns that come in from this side and from that side to get this crystal. And I've seen so many people really struggle to find the proper harpoon placement to, to handle those without dying or without taking hits. Well the first way we just want one right here straight behind it. And when I come back after the first way I'll show you the simplest placement possible to handle the entire stage. And that's all we're going to do over there for now. We'll go ahead and go this way next. Got three chests over here when you start. Grab this one, this one, and across the way. How fast or how slow you beat this is really up to you, because you can just stay at the crystal and uh, go through it faster, or you can go through all the loot that drops and find some gear that way. Okay, so here's what you do for this, uh, this choke. Right where this barrel is, between the wall and the barrel, you're going to form a wall with two bouncers. There we go. I can't walk through. Can't walk through. And I can't walk through. So it's a full wall. And we're going to put a harpoon back here. So 
So one important thing to know is that ogres spawn all over this map, and what they're going to do is they're going to come up here and start bashing on your front defenses. If you put your DPS towers too close to these, the ogre is going to hit everything at once. And that could be devastating to you, that could cause you to wipe and lose the map. So make sure that you keep your defenses back far enough to be protected from the ogre. And this crystal as well has wyverns that fly at it. Just put one behind it. Just like we did at the other place. This one harpoon is actually all you need the entire game. Because of the way that the wyverns have to funnel down into this single choke, they line up perfectly so that one harpoon can kill them without any problem. And now we're going to go to the last part of the map over here to the right. I didn't see any mana come out of that chest. Uh. Okay, this one's a little bit weird. I've done it a few different ways. The way I decided I like to do it the best is to put my blockade right where this blue mushroom and this rock is. And here's what I like to do for this one. It's a little bit too wide to fully wall off with just one. So what I do is I put it to the right a little bit here. So you can't get past it to the right. And to supplement the fact that you can fit through on the left here, it's going to be a bowling ball turret. Put it back just a little bit farther. Now, with the bowling balls, they're good because they push mobs back, so that's pretty much going to keep anything from being able to walk through this very easily. Every time they try to walk through, they're going to get slammed by a boulder and pushed right into this bouncer. And then from there, we're going to go back. We'll go ahead and backtrack here. Th this doorway, you want to put a bouncer. Sometimes at random, mobs from this door, instead of going downstairs to this crystal, they decide they want to go up here to that one. If you don't have this there, uh, that can be very bad for you. So, At the bottom of these stairs here, two bouncers. No, I'm going to put the harpoon over to the left so that I got great line of sight kind of around the corner. Going back straight up from there. And now we need to block off this as well. There you go. That's your first wave set up right there, guys. If you want to take a screenshot or just stare at that and pause the video. You got spawn points. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with the spawn points. This one here, I do something different than others. Uh, the mobs generally come out of this door, go up that way. And I say that if you don't come near it, they'll never go down this way. But I swear they do, so I will blockade this off. Let's go ahead and get started on the first wave. Get some killing done, get some mana, and show you the full build. It's a good idea when you're soloing a stage, especially one this large, to press tab and just check out your your map every once in a while to see if there's any mobs that aren't dying for some reason. Generally speaking, it'd be an archer that's at a distance from a defensive structure and just picking away at it. Which is why I really don't rely on slice and dice towers like most people do, uh, because they get killed by ranged enemies. Unless you have a lot of ranged DPS behind it. And then once you've put ranged DPS behind it, 
You uh, waste so many defense units. Okay, let's finish up the build. This corner, right here on the corner, is going to get a harpoon. I'm going to kind of point it straight over there. This is so that any summoners or anything like that decide to stand here and be creative and just spawn skeletons and be annoying. Uh, they will get shot by the harpoons and killed. It also adds DPS to the ogres when the ogres come. Get these two chests and I'll show you the finished build for this side. Okay, let me show you how incredibly easy the harpoon placement is for this. I've seen people put them up here, I've seen people put them sideways, I've seen so many weird things with the harpoons. All you gotta do is this. Three harpoons, straightforward. I kind of leave the first one sticking out just a little bit further, but not that that really matters. I swear to you, on, even on Insane, three harpoons pointing this way will kill every single wyvern without fail. As for over here, we're going to put one more harpoon. I want it like that. Now the reason I like to have them staggered a little bit is because you don't want both harpoons locking onto the same enemy and shooting two darts at the same time because they're going to kill them in one hit and you're just wasting a shot. So trying to stagger the harpoons a little bit is useful because generally speaking it'll increase the efficiency of the unit. This is the uh, full build for the right side or the left side. Three harpoons here protecting from wyverns, a slice and dice with two harpoons behind it. And then I, I told you I like to block this off as well. This is optional. I've had people say that no enemies will ever go down this way as long as they're not aggroed. And if that's the case and you want to take that risk, then, then go for it. And you can have some extra defense units to beef up your defenses somewhere. Up this way, we're going to take advantage of this really steep staircase. And just put two bowling ball turrets. This is more than enough damage along with this harpoon to kill everything that comes that way, including ogres. And now for over here, it's going to be three harpoons. Again, kind of staggering them a little bit so they generally won't lock on all to the same target at the same time. Up this way. That one cannon is not going to be sufficient. So we want good line of sight, so I'm going to get like right about here where I can see it's going to go straight through. Put a harpoon down. And then I'm going to put one a little bit more around the corner so that it shoots the things to come from this way, straight down this way. So it's one cannon and two harpoons and a bouncer. This choke is complete. This choke here with two bouncers and three harpoons is also complete. The last thing to do is just fill this out. It needs three harpoons.
And that's all she wrote. The setup's complete. You have six defense units left. You can get creative here. If you have a monk, I recommend that you go put down some of the slow auras because they make any square tower basically three or four times more effective. If you have a apprentice, what I would do is because mobs like to go backwards to where I have that bumper right there, I like to go put a, a mage tower back here so that if anything is attacking this, the tower can hit them. It's up to you what you do with the last defense unit. There's the setup complete. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Pretty much up to you if you decide to just sit here and let everything do it on its own or if you'd like to go and help out. You could also, you know, be involved and go upgrade your towers and do stuff like that. And now when the wave is complete, this is when you decide if you want to uh, go loot everything or just stay at the crystal and st start right over again. I'm going to go ahead and use the defense unit to put this here. Normally what I do with my last defense units is uh, protect this door up here with a tower. And I'm going to switch to my ult real quick here. Get my very last level 70. Kind of show you guys how the defenses are working out. I wouldn't recommend running around like I'm doing right now in the later waves because the ninjas will jump on you. Oh, there's one right there. Looks like he got harpooned. Yay me, I get to level up to 70 on camera. And I officially have a level 70 of every class now. There's some pretty good loot in these treasure chests sometimes. So for me, it's worth it to go loot them. If you're really just in a hurry to farm mana or experience, then you can just stay at the crystal. And you should make sure your towers are staying repaired. Take a look at them once in a while on the map. So many ogres.
These regular ogres are no big deal. It's later on when the red ones come in, you have to be careful. For that, if you're a lower level squire, you might want to be upgrading your towers more than I am. Should be good. Looks like up north got beat up just a little bit. We'll go check on it. The ninth wave is really where the damage starts. And then the tenth wave is obviously the worst and where your defenses are most prone to fail. Get this started. Wave nine. If you're a low level character trying to do this, what you might want to do is wherever you see an ogre going, like say on that left side, you can just stand up above and repair the slice and dice tower as it's being beaten up, and you'll be safe. First ogre is right here. You can see that harpoon doing its work. And I could obviously be hitting the ogre and helping if I was nice to it, but oh well. Next ogre is right back here. That thing's looking pretty solid. Go ahead and upgrade these. And the bouncers, since they took some damage from the ogre. Okay, final wave. The final wave is pretty serious business. There's a lot of ogres that come and they have 
more HP than they did before. So you do want to go ahead and make sure that you're prepared for this. Most of your money is going to come from all the items you get to sell. If you didn't know when you press the shift key and you're looking at the map, towers flash when they've been damaged to past a certain degree. They get red when they're like really damaged, etc. etc. So this is a good visual way for you to make sure that your defenses are all 100 percent before you start this final wave. If it's flashing, you better fix it. Just to be safe. Let's go ahead and start it up, I guess. Really like the music on the final wave. Looked like he was about to go to that back door where the bouncer was. Luckily he got tagged by a harpoon and came this way. He'll go down easy. It's three harpoons. Yep. Looks like I just took crystal damage. ogres in the same direction. I'll go check that out. Make sure we're okay. If it was just one, eh, no biggie, but two. Might require me to intervene. Uh, which means upgrade, please. Oh, too late. <laughs> I haven't used my skills before. That means mana bomb! There we go. It would have been okay without me. The towers would have lasted long enough, but better safe than sorry. Okay guys, that is the tutorial video for this stage. Now you know how to solo it with a squire. Again, this is by far the best way to farm mana and experience for right now that I know of. And I hope you found it useful. If you're not quite strong enough and high enough in level to do this yet, Ramparts is going to be the next best stage to do that on. You can solo that one pretty easy. It's not nearly as big, it's faster, it's easier to manage. So I'll be making a video on that one probably very shortly because that's another really great one to do this on. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.